Hi everyone, I am Dr. Sandeep Sharma, your Pediatric Super Speciality Faculty at Prep Ladder. So the NEET SS exam is already done. I know you must be fatigued. Many of you might be thinking of whether the exam was tough for me or it was tough for everyone. So let me break the news for you. Yes, it was a tough exam in the pediatric section. So here I am going to take up the analysis post exam and the takeaways from it. It is not a recall session. It is something more important than that. After the exam, whether you have actually given the exam or you are going to sit for the exam in 2023 or maybe 2024, this video is going to be very, very important for you because it will tell you how the new pattern was, what were the takeaways, what were the areas from where questions were more frequently asked and what were the areas where uh, there was a change in the previous as compared to previous pattern. So let us begin with the discussion. This entire analysis is based upon uh, what students have given the feedback. So first is overall difficulty level. When I say overall difficulty level, yes, it was a tough exam. So it was tougher than the last three to four previous NEED super speciality exam. If you have seen the older NEED SS questions, uh, the questions were simpler, uh, they were shorter in nature and uh, the overall weightage was also slightly different. But this NEET SS exam, there were a lot of clinical scenarios. So more clinical scenarios and it covered almost every system possible, including the systems we do not normally read like pediatric dermatology, pediatric orthopedics, uh, certain parts of genetics, we don't normally read them in our day-to-day -day practice in our residency, but there were questions asked from them. So it was a overall difficult paper. When I say difficult, a lot of people ask me, sir, quantify. So there, there is no index system here to quantify. But if I have to rate on a scale of 1 to 10, and if I rate the previous NEET SS papers, the previous last year NEET SS exam, which was held previous to this one, it was somewhere in the range of 6.5 out of 10 on a difficulty rating. This one was somewhere around 8 to 8.5 out of 10. It was not unsolvable, but yes, it was a tough paper. Then there were some rare untouched topics which will I will be coming to in some time. There were few ECG images and ventilation graphs were also there. Uh, some students found the paper lengthy also. Two of the students messaged saying, sir, we were barely able to finish the paper because whenever you have a length, uh, have clinical scenarios are there, you need to spend time reading about it and making sure that you are not missing out on something important. And there were few indirect or direct repeats also. And lastly, many topic repeats were there. Some of the topics, if you remember, we had discussed about the strategy areas to focus before the exam. I'm not going to claim, uh, you know, that I made this, this prediction and this, this things were asked. But I'm going to be more pragmatic and I'm going to say that yes, there were topic repeats. In NEET SS exam, there are certain topics from where questions are very frequently asked. Like there was a question on Die George syndrome. Now, if you look at the past papers, you will find that Die George syndrome has been asked three to four times in the last four or five papers. So Dijord syndrome you have to read and it was an easy question. So if you get a question like Dijord syndrome wrong in the paper like this, it is a silly mistake. It is going to be a big setback for your rank. That is the truth we need to face. There will always be unsolvable questions. There were at least 15 to 16 from what recall I have seen from the students. 15 to 16 from what I have heard from the students. 15 to 16 questions were kind of unsolvable. They were very difficult level questions. But um, for questions like Dijord syndrome, there were questions on SMA, there were few, uh, there was a question on tricuspid atresia. All of them were solvable questions. So you should score heavily in the solvable areas. And so when you practice past papers, focus on the topic rather than the question itself. So this was the first thing regarding the difficulty level. Second thing, uh, there were three to four drug questions as expected. Uh, as I said, uh, before uh, the exam happened, I told you that there are neonatology, cardiology uh, related drugs which are asked and there are monoclonal antibodies which were asked. So there was one monoclonal antibody here also and then there was heparin which was asked. So uh, see everything cannot be read, every drug cannot be read. It's not a pharmacology paper but having said that, the questions if you have been a good student, you have been reading about it, they were actually solvable. Areas focused more in the exam. Now this is important for future aspirants. Although it was balanced, certain areas had more weightage and more atypical MCQs. So, pediatric nephrology, pediatric neurology, pediatric GI and hepatology and inborn errors of metabolism had a good number of MCQs including clinical scenario questions. And especially neurology and nephrology questions were not straightforward one-liner. They were clinical questions. Some of them had ambiguous options as well. So, you need to be thorough with your concepts. Only by reading the tables or only by, you know, going through one-liners, you cannot solve such questions which were asked. Many of you will relate to it. So, a lot of weightage was there. So, I, for unknown reasons, pediatric nephrology 
has been a favorite of NEET SS examiners since last few years. And there were questions on Bartle syndrome, there were questions on PSG, and there were questions on 16 stones, in fact. So, a lot of questions were asked from these areas. Relatively more MCQs were asked from emergency management, including toxicology. And uh, pediatric cardiology, neonatology had the usual number of MCQs as older pattern. Uh, although the topics chosen were atypical. For example, in cardiology, you had question on, there was a question on tricuspid atresia, which is expected question, uh, expected topic. But there was also a question on benign uh, innocent murmur. Nobody reads about it, right? So, there were atypical questions from these areas. Neurotology also, there were questions on congenital infections and questions on uh, how you are going to do the genetic counseling. What are the possibilities if this has happened in the mother and so on. And then lesser MCQs were asked from anthropometry and embryology. Yes, there were two or three questions from embryology, but uh, they were almost on the verge of unsolvable nature at least the renal one from the from what I've heard and uh, you cannot remember everything. So there will always be questions which are fact based or which nobody can answer. It's absolutely fine with it. Please understand that difficult paper you always have a better chance of selection because clustering is always less and anthropometry also direct questions were less more indirect questions were there compared to previous papers. Having said that you cannot leave anything. And many expected topics were uh, typically asked in need SS every year. I've already given you the examples. There was Rickett's question, there was Dijor syndrome question, there was anticipation. All of them have been asked in the previous years. Then new or atypical topics asked in the exam. So there was a question on post-drowning cardiopulmonary resuscitation. No, nobody frankly reads about it. Then electrocution injury, there was a difficult question, atypical topic. Renal injury in snake bite and venomation, there was a question. Organ donation in pediatrics, it is an important topic. Uh, but nobody reads uh, those review articles which are there and uh, these some of these questions were not covered. This, the text of Nelson was not adequately covering them. Uh, benign innocent murmur was there, some genetic counseling scenarios were there, there were questions related to complication after liver transplant. Uh, apraxia and dyslexia usually uh, again neurology when you read you focus more on infections, epilepsies and neuroregression but apraxia and dyslexia uh, specific learning disability, these topics which are there in Nelson volume 1, nobody reads them, uh, the, the initial part which are there, there were questions from them. And then CNS lesion localization, the arterial ischemic stroke, what you used to do when you were preparing for need PG in medicine, similar questions are being asked. Uh, yes, stroke localization is asked in your clinical exams, it is asked as a case, but for SS exam it has not been asked in the previous papers but this time there were questions so these were all atypical topics which were asked this year when i say atypical i am not saying that they are unsolvable or they are very difficult what it means is that usually neat ss when you prepare you prepare according to a pattern these topics are out of you know slightly different from what we normally prepare for ss exam you must keep in mind it was a new pattern paper and so, the, the, it's like a initial warning for us, for those who are going to sit in the uh, 2023 paper, that you should be reading some of the related topics also in details based upon the new pattern. And then, scabies management in children. Practically, we all do it. Like in my practice, I do find patients of scabies. I don't refer to a dermatologist. I write the treatment, I identify the lesion, I write the treatment. So, if you are a practicing dermatologist or if you remember from what in from your OPD that whatever management you are doing and what are the points related to it, it was an easy question. But in case you haven't be seen a patient or you haven't read it recently, it could have been a difficult question for you. And then takeaways from the exam. Neat SS pediatric newer pattern is tougher. It is more comprehensive and more clinical compared to last papers. Nelson still contributed. Nelson is still the boss. Although it is a lesser boss now. When I say lesser boss, relatively speaking. Need to 2018-19, you will find that almost 90%, 95% questions used to be from Nelson. Now, it is about 60-70%, to 70%, maybe around 80% of questions. So, Nelson continues to be the master area, master book you have to read for SS exam. But alone Nelson, you need to supplement it with certain additional topics. At least topics you can read from the other resources like Loherty, Parks, uh, maybe from Vanichel in Pediatric Neurology, selected topics from Swyman or from Review Article. You can't read everything I know. I, but, but this is for those who are in residency that a comprehensive reading is important. You cannot take shortcuts 
for NEET SS exam. Conceptual reading and practicing clinical MCQs is very important. You have seen clinical questions, so you need to practice them more. Conceptual reading is very important. The era of NEET SS being a one-liner based paper is virtually over now and you need to understand that. Very limited role of practicing or reading NEET PG level MCQs and topics. Many of you were uh, only going by like one of the students, I won't take name and I've already told him that uh, you made this mistake. He said, sir, I have read from you in NEET PG and because of positive of time, I only read those topics from the from your notes, which I had made three years back. This approach would have worked in NEET SS 2018, but it will not work in 2022 and further exams. You need to read more in details and you are all MD or DNB pediatric residents. So you need to read of that level now. For practice, of course, you can do it, but you need to be specific and Nelson needs to be your core area of reading. Pediatric Neuro, Pediatric Nephro, Pediatric GIT need detailed and comprehensive reading. When I say comprehensive, you need to take the help of selected latest guidelines, review articles and any additional source other than Nelson as well. Selectively, retrospectively, whatever topic has been asked, that not cover to cover. And images are being asked more often now, so be thorough with the images as well. Lastly, message for those who are targeting NEET SS in 2023, do not ignore Nelson 21st edition. Any coaching institute, any video, any uh, study material will only help you in fine tuning. End of the day, the boss continues to be Nelson. That is the primary and most important thing for your SS exam. Read more clinical and conceptual, less press on fact-based one-liners. All those who are uh, thousand one-liners for pediatrics. It works for NEET PG. It does not work even for NEET PG now, but it works for, you know, other exams. For SS exam, that error is over. Do not waste time on NEET PG related content. Cover every system in pediatrics, including topics, uh, areas like pediatric dermatology, genetics and pediatric toxicology. Basic ECG, basic EEG, ventilator graph patterns you need to read. Focus on these areas. You can take the help of specific books. You can go with uh, certain self-help videos. Uh, Nelson also has these, all your books which you read. They are important. What you do in your residency, in clinical teaching, that becomes very important. And at my end, I'll make sure that in the coming days, there are more things related to it coming up on Prep Ladder. Although it's not a forum to announce it, but Prep Ladder SS Pediatrics, NEET SS is over. We are going to overhaul it. We are going to change a lot of things uh, related to based upon the new pattern. And these will be reflected. We'll be talking about it separately. Pediatric neurology needs additional resources if the time permits. Practice topics rather than MCQ, I've already told you. And difficulty level, of a lot of people ask, sir, what is the difficulty level? Usually, INISS is always tougher compared to NEET SS. It continues to be tougher. And of course, the pattern also is slightly different because you have to read about these specialities a bit more. But the gap between them has now narrowed. Having said that, if you prepare, if you know, say, if you read, if you know about the topic called as spinal muscular atrophy well, and you have understood the five subtypes, be it is going to be asked and the treatment and the new drugs, whether it is INISS, whether it is a NEET SS, you are going to answer the question correctly. So there is no shortcut here. Good concepts, good reading of Nelson, closer to the exam, some MCQ practice, being thorough with the topics which were covered, which were asked in the previous four or five papers and believing in yourself. That is all you need. Obviously, luck and blessings will play their part but at your end you must take the exam more seriously there are no shortcuts in this exam i hope you will benefit from it and uh, for those who have not done well i have just one message to give to you all of you are pediatricians even if you have not done well in this exam falling down is a part of life getting back up is living we all fall down another exam is just a few months away work on your weak areas and you will be able to get through all the best.